Hello. This video is about the statues algorithm. My name is Pierre Denis. Uh, I'm a software developer here in Belgium, and uh, this is basically a spare time project. Let me introduce the context of the present research by this motivating use case. It's a basic uh, classical job scheduling problem with three tasks, A, B, and C. We can calculate the total duration of this schedule, which is called the make span, with this uh, small formula, where DA, DB, and DC are the respective duration of the tasks. Things are a bit more interesting if we assume that there is some uncertainty about the, this duration. For example, task A here could have um, a duration of three days, four days, or five days with um, different probabilities. For task B, we have another probability distribution. And to make things even more interesting for task C, we assume that there are there is three different scenario possible conservative evolutive or disruptive with respective probability distri distribution any of these scenario has also its own uh, probability to occur you may recognize here a conditional probability table uh, cpt Based on this small uh, model, we can have several queries. What is the probability that the mix span is in a given range? We can calculate also a conditional probability like here. Uh, we observe that the scenario is disruptive. What is the probability that the mix span is seven days? And we can have even more involved queries like this one, which is also a conditional probability. But this time we use, uh, we obs our observation are made of um, inequalities or even an or. Okay, it's a bit contrived example, but it shows um, uh, all the generality of the query we could, we could make. Let me move a bit on this side. So the scope here is, as you see, uh, discrete random variables, even uh, finite discrete random variables. The, the domain is finite. And we would like also to have exact inference, which, which is something uh, that seems reachable on this small problem. OK. Problem statement, there are two questions, I think, here. How to model this kind of problem in a simple way? As maybe you know, if you work on the probabilistic programming uh, research field, there are many existing ways to do that. There are discrete random variable or continuous or even mixed model where both uh, kind of variable occur. There are also many specialized frameworks um, like Bayesian networks, Markov chains, uh, adding together two variables. It's called probabilistic arithmetic. But initially, all these frameworks or algorithms are not meant to be mixed to together. Things are uh, now evolving since several years now with the probabilistic program programming research field, PP, where we have a richer model. A second question is how to solve this kind of problem, preferably in an efficient way. Um, many algorithms exist or framework for, for the framework that we have seen. And, um, sorry, oops, uh, the, uh, some of these algorithms are exact, other are approximate. Here we choose to be uh, exact. So to answer the first uh, question, um, I will propose here a, a new unifying framework that tries to 
be able to, to model the, the job scheduling problem and many others, um, which is called the P expressions, actually, the, this uh, new framework. And for solving the problem, uh, as you have seen in the title, uh, I propose here a new exact algorithm, the status algorithm. I will elaborate uh, on, on this uh, on the next uh, part of this video. Okay, uh, you would say there are many, many algorithms already. Uh, is it something new? Uh, I would say yes, I think so, because <clears throat> these algorithms use a new technique called generators. I will present uh, after what it means. Okay, first of all, the first part, how to model this, uh, this kind of problem. Uh, here, p-expression, it's basically uh, a framework that uh, defines five building blocks with uh, composition between these building blocks. Again, it's limited only to discrete and finite random variables. So the goal is to take a random variable a big D and uh, model it as a p-expression uh, D, a small d. Uh, the nickname for this p expression is PEX. So here are um, these five uh, building blocks. Uh, we have, first of all, elementary PEX. That's the most simple. It's a probability mass function or cat categorical um, distribution. Um, it's prior probabilities, like uh, here the probability of a dice. A die, sorry. We have then uh, the four other PEXs are uh, for uh, derived uh, depending um, uh, random variables. We have first the tuple PEX, an association of two, 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 two PEX um, or any number by composition. Uh, so it's useful for derived uh, joint probability distribution and also for function arguments as I, I will show now. We have functional PEX, which is basically to model um, a function on random variable. So it's useful to do arithmetic, comparison, logical uh, operation, but actually any other um, uh, function like indexing, min, max, membership, and many others are, can be used. So a small remark here, we, we speak about pure functions, so there is no side effect, something very important. And in all the functions I mentioned here, like uh, addition, subtraction, these are pure function. Uh, another point is that uh, in a functional PEX, there is only an unary uh, function. And should you have to model a function with two arguments, like uh, addition, you have to use first the tuple PEX to assemble the two arguments together and then apply the function, the functional PEX on this uh, tuple PEX. You can see here the notation with a small hat. On our, so F is a function and uh, putting the, the at uh, on top of uh, F means that it's the, the PEX on, on this. So the PEX is not the same as the function itself. We have then a, a very important PEX, which is the conditional PEX, which allows to uh, model um, pro uh, conditional probability. We have some evidence or observation E. And uh, based on this observation, we want to uh, evaluate another PEX X. The last one is the table PEX. It's basically an association um, of uh, a value of a given PEX C with other PEX. Um, so each, each value is associated to a specific PEX and it's used to model a if then else or a CPT. And as you probably expect, uh, you can do uh, also Bayesian networks and Markov chains with that. Okay, so 
I continue maybe to give you a small example. We have here uh, two random variables, two flips Bernoulli with um, uh, probably probability distribution with two values, zero or one. We add them together, which is S, and then we would like to uh, evaluate a new random variable is it's B, the, the first flip B1 under the condition that the total is not greater than one. So if you want to translate that in P expression, you have this. So the two Bernoulli becomes uh, elementary pexes. The sum of the, these two uh, random variables is functional pex with the add here. We combine the two arguments with tuple pex, as, as I explained. The last one is uh, the conditional probab probability using uh, okay another functional pex to evaluate the uh, larger or equal function. So this small um, p expression model could be represented as a tree. A tree, not really a tree. It's um, uh, a DAG, a direct acyclic graph, as here. It's something very uh, common um, in probabilistic uh, modeling, actually. Sometimes we call about um, a graphical model for, for this kind of structure. And the goal then is to give the root PEX here, the conditional PEX, to the algorithm, the status algorithm, to evaluate the resulting uh, probability distribution. Here it's a, a more elaborated example where you see uh, we have two, two dice. We here, yeah, you, you have to, to read from bottom to up. We have two dice, we add them together and we calculate again a conditional probability, but with this time with a, an end to inequality. So it's a, a, a bit more involved. By the way, you see here that um, in this expression, there are uh, numbers which are not uh, basically a probability distribution because these are certain. It's a certain six and a certain four. But in the framework, we transform that into um, a simple elementary PEX. So we say that six is basically a probability probability distribution with probability one. That's the, um, uh, the, the small uh, symbol, uh, the, the, the double brackets. Uh, it's the, the meaning of this uh, the double bracket actually. Okay, so if you look at this, uh, you could uh, easily see that to evaluate this kind of expression, you cannot do what you do with arithmetic expression. For example, in arithmetic expression, when you do A plus B plus C, you can build, a, build up a tree and you can uh, evaluate uh, each, each side of uh, each branch together and then assemble the, the, the result. Here, it's not possible because what we have here, it's, it's not a tree. It's a directed acyclic graph. And we see, for example, that the add functional PEX is referred twice in the, in the, in the model. Uh, so in the DAG, there are two parents. So you cannot say, OK, I will evaluate uh, the, the, the right branch and then the left branch. It will not work because there is um, a, a dependency. You have to remain consistent on, on this node. The same occur, by the way, on uh, D2 also, which is referred twice in, in the model. So we need something else in, uh, in general. Maybe divide and conquer can work on, on three models, but generally it won't work. So we define here uh, the top level function, which is marge for ma marginalization. So the, the input is the, the root PEX D, as I shown uh, in the previous slide, which represents some random variable D. 
the marginalization then will is expected to produce um, uh, a new probability uh, distribution which is exact which is the exact pmf uh, probability mass function of d and uh, yeah this is presented as a small table giving all the value with respective probabilities so this is the the, the top level um, uh, the entry point function of this status algorithm before entering the algorithm i need to speak about um, generator you have seen that word in the title maybe you know what it is uh, anyway i prefer to make a small recap about this probably all of you know about function a caller calls a function then the caller stops and waits that the function uh, executes at the end of execution of the function the function returns some results to the caller and then the caller can continue very simple so far a generator in contrast works a bit differently the caller call the generator and then it waits the generator uh, process um, makes some processing and then yields a first result to the caller and the generator stops then the caller can process this um, this yielded value and it will stop again and ask the generator to produce another value so in contrast with a function here the generator keeps a con an execution context and can resume and yield a result at uh, any time depending of um, the caller etc so after that the the generator can process a second yield value and it continue like this so you may say um, this is uh, a programming trick um, it's a, a new way to implement the the existing uh, algorithm actually i think it's far more than that uh, generator is something uh, it's really a new way to see how a program can work and it's an opportunity to define new kinds of algorithm especially for combinatorial generation problems you can see here even um, a phd thesis of sahan sabah uh, which explained this uh, very well by the way yes you see here uh, probably you wonder why this name statues uh, actually it's a game maybe you know this game uh, you played it when you were children um, uh, it's a it's a game where you have to to move and then at some point you you have to stop and not move then you can continue as you can see here on on this uh, picture other names uh, include uh, red lights green lights uh, in uk it's uh, i think grandmother's footstep uh, in france uh, it's uh, un deux trois soleil uh, in belgium it's un deux trois piano actually there are many many names depending on, of the country you can find a nice um, wikipedia uh, 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 entry about about this game okay some key ideas about this um, algorithm so each pex uh, call a generator on its pex children each child pet pex yields atoms to its pex parents so what is an atom it's a uh, basically it's a, it's a tuple vp with a value and the probability of this value and uh, all these atoms form a partition of the sample space so it means that um, you can receive uh, several atoms for the same value with different probability but because it's a partition you can add them together you you can you can add the probability together without error because it's a partition and 
because it's a partition also you are sure that you don't miss any case so that, that's the con contract we want to put on the concept of atom uh, it's a core um, element of the algorithm another important point is the um, the concept of binding at any step of execution actually we have um, uh, any pex is either free it's not yet bound or it is bound to some value v i will explain that what, what it means a bit later okay so let's start with uh, the, the the root pex so as i explained we have this marge um, function which is called on d d is the the root pex of the of the model D calls a generator on uh, his children. Here there is just one child, X. So it calls gen atoms X. And X, after some processing, is able to yield uh, an atom, VIPIG, here, to the root PEX. D collects all the atoms. So as I explained, um, all the atoms come one from uh, one by one it collects it and it collects these atoms and put them in a small table by value and it sum together all the probability for each each value so other atoms uh, received it at the very end x is exhausted and cannot give uh, yield on uh, any other atoms then we make a big sum here on this table and we can normalize this result and we get the uh, final PMF result. So that's the goal. So if we assume that the atoms are a good partition of the uh, algorithm, this should work. So now you may wonder, okay, what happens for inner uh, pecs in, in, the, in the graph? So here I assume we have here um, um, a PEX X. The parent R calls a generator on X. What happens? Uh, X will first check whether it's free or bound. Here initially it is free. It means that X is free to continue. Uh, it will ask uh, his own children to yield their own atom. So it calls gen atoms on the first child. The first child yields some atom u, q to x. The same for the other z, which uh, yield his own atom. After that, x uh, makes some processing depending of uh, the type of pex. Uh, it will actually make uh, some processing with u and w, and which will, which will produce v. Uh, for example, it could be an addition of u and w if x is a functional pex that represent addition. And then it will uh, bind this value to x and it will uh, build, it will yield, sorry, this value v to the parent with a probability p, which depends on the probability of atom received. Usually, here um, it's it's simply multiplying the two probabilities so p will be equal to q multiplied by d so far so good and then uh, x uh, waits uh, another activation from his parent here what happens then if x is bound actually if X is bound, it means also that his, all his children are bound also, you see in, in this picture. Uh, okay, what happens then if another parent call X while it is uh, bound? <clears throat> Here it's very simple, X doesn't go uh, any further and it returns, no, sorry, it yields the value V with probability 1. And it's the sole act atom which is yielded in this case. Uh, 
So that's uh, a very uh, important stuff. If you remember, I explained that the divide and conquer doesn't work. Here, it is really the, the, the solution to maintain the consistency, the reference consistency um, of the, uh, the calculation. Okay, um, <clears throat> what happens now, uh, there are a special case actually, uh, this process uh, can continue up to the leaf element, which are the, the elementary pexes. So if we assume here that X represents a, a, a die with a prior uh, probability distribution, then it's very simple. Uh, it takes here the first value, which is one, and it yields um, an atom with one and its uh, probability. Uh, another uh, special case which is important is conditional uh, PEX here. So what happens, it's uh, X will ask his, uh, his uh, child here, you see dotted lines, it means that Y represents here a condition, uh, the condition which is maintained by X. So first X ask, please, um, um, PEX Y evaluate the, the condition, <clears throat> Y can do some processing and then it can yield, uh, in this example, uh, an atom which return, which yield false. In this case, the value false really blocks further processing and uh, nothing will be yielded to the parent. So X doesn't continue to evaluate Z and it doesn't yield uh, any atom to R. So it's very important in the algorithm because it's really a, pr a pruning of the in the uh, solution space. So doing this saves uh, can save a lot of, of time. It can save a lot of wasteful calculation actually. So if you put all things together, you can follow here um, the full execution trace on, uh, on the problem I gave in the, in, in the beginning. You see here, uh, okay, the, the, the model, the PEX model, and uh, the different, in, the, in this table, you see the different steps. There are four steps. So you have to read row by row and from left to right, and you can follow really what happens in the algorithms. Here, what you see in this table is really the, uh, the, the atoms that goes from bottom to top, from the elementary pecs to the root pecs. You see all the, all the other atom all the, all the way. And, um, at the very uh, right of this table, you have uh, the atoms that are yielded by the root pecs. Here, there are three atoms. And uh, for the last one, you see that the condition uh, blocks the, the processing. So nothing is yielded for the last case because the two variables equals one. So it's uh, greater than um, the, the, the value expressed in the condition. We don't want we to go uh, above one actually for the sum. So nothing is returned. And you see on the right, so these atoms are collected by the root pecs. And um, these are, there is some condens condensation, all the zero and all the one are grouped together with some. So what you see here is the sum of probabilities. It's not yet the final probability distribution because it's not yet normalized actually. And it's not normalized. So the total of probability is not equal to one precisely because some af atoms have been dropped. So it's a very simple processing. Uh, at the end, you replace this by um, a normalized, you add, the probability together and you normalize the, the the PMF. Okay, so you can read, you can put this on pause and uh, check uh, at uh, at your time. Um, a small note about the formal algorithm also, which is in a in a paper. 
So there is some pseudocode to precisely describe this um, status algorithm. There are three parts. Um, so the top level function, Marge, the genatoms generator, and also something that I, I, uh, I skip before, genatoms by type. It's another generator. So it's a subsidiary, subsidiary generator actually because um, uh, genatoms makes uh, just the management of bindings while genatoms by type handle each PEX type. So it's simply technically a way to um, separate the, the concern of the, the program. And here you can see also the, the calling graph of, uh, of this Marge called genatoms. Genatoms, if uh, the PEX is free, will call genatoms by type and genatoms by type will um, call uh, genatoms. So you see uh, recursive call um, only if it is a derived PEX. It means that when you have uh, elementary PEX like a, a die or a flip coin, um, genatoms by type can uh, do not call genatoms. And that's the end of the recursion. There are two implementations actually of this um, algorithm. First, the first one is LIA, which is a um, Python uh, implementation, which is few, fully usable. It's really a, a comprehensive probabilistic toolkit with indicators, machine learning, also information theory, indicator like entropy. Uh, since it's uh, an exact algorithm, actually, uh, we, LIA can do symbolic calculation using um, a sim, SymPy module, which is a Python module dedicated to math mathematical development. Uh, LIA is highly optimized and um, uh, it's basically simple to use, but the implementation is quite complex. There is another module which is called MicroLIA, which is uh, very simple and short. The functionality is limited in, in contrast with LIA. But MicroLIA, if you know a bit Python, is, uh, is ideal to understand PEX and status algorithm. So let's discuss a bit um, this algorithm. So first of all, uh, this works. It works because it has been implemented, but also uh, many results have been checked with literature or books. And there, there is also a proof of correctness, which is um, you can read in the annex of um, a, an archive paper. I think the main asset of the algorithm it's, is uh, its scope, which is quite large. I mean by large uh, in the scope of discrete random variable. So it covers joint probability distribution, Bayesian network, Markov chains, probabilistic arithmetic, and even a, a mix, a model mixing all these uh, frameworks together. It's open to any data types beside booleans and, and numbers. I mean by that you can use uh, strings, date times, tuple, functions, even matrices as domain of your um, probability distribution. It's open to any function also, any pure function uh, beside equality and con conjunction. You can do negation, all the uh, logical operator, arithmetic operator, membership, membership, etc. And all these can be composed without restriction. So, as I show, uh, as I shown uh, showed before, you can have observation made up of function. Like um, you observe that a, a value, a random variable, is within a range of values. You can multiply two variables of a Bayesian network and put it in an inequality of the observation and many more. 
A very important point is about efficiency. So as an exact algorithm, uh, limitations are very well known. It's This kind of program is known to be NP-hard. Uh, however, uh, if you read um, the paper uh, of uh, Stevel, Olzen and, and other, which is uh, mentioned here, you can see that there is, despite this uh, complexity, there is uh, plenty of room to um, factorize calculation. And in the specific case of uh, status algorithms, it's, it's far better than a naive enumeration algorithm. Why? Because, as I explained, uh, there is some pruning um, for, uh, first of all, for, for conditional pecs. We don't check all the sample pairs space as soon as we know that a condition is wrong we we can stop directly um, to 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 check this branch in in the solution space there is also this uh, binding uh, mechanism which actually uh, do a, a kind of caching it means that when you evaluate a functional pex um, the algorithm will evaluate only uh, uh, once a function for each uh, each set of his arguments. There is no uh, a given function is never called twice on the same arguments, actually. And uh, a third point is short circuit evaluation. I mean by that, when you do an observation with a end, you can uh, stop uh, if some condition of the end is, is false, you can stop and don't evaluate the remaining condition. So it's also a very important concept that, that can be used by the status algorithm to uh, make things uh, faster. And uh, <clears throat> generators are known to be memory efficient, by the way. Um, the test I've, I've made showed that LIA implementation seems to be competitive with other tools. So by competitive, I mean, okay, it's um, we can uh, basically compare the, the result and uh, it's uh, the, the results are decent on several problems at least. But of course, benchmark should be elaborated. There are several extensions possible for um, um, the status algorithms. So we can do new uh, P expression, for example, uh, for covering noisy or uh, function. Since it's an exact algorithm, there is ability to do symbolic computation. It is done. I will show you an example at the end of the video. So it means that you don't have a probability with number, but the algorithm produce a formula um, for a probability distribution. There is also a possibility to couple the algorithms with machine learning, like maximum likelihood or uh, uh, EM algorithm. And uh, yeah, quantum computing, okay, is something I've tried, but it's a bit more complex than expected, so uh, it's halted. And uh, as I mentioned, there is for sure some optimization. There is room for optimization, especially considering um, uh, the DICE language, which is uh, referred in the paper that you see above. Um, there is, uh, yeah some problem where uh, the status algorithm is, is a bit stuck. Okay, and, uh, and the associated benchmarks. So let me uh, finish with several samples from LIA. This is um, a very old problem at uh, early, early time of <laughs> probability with um, uh, this small problem from uh, De Moivre. Uh, to find the probability of throwing an ace in, in three rows, in, in three rows, sorry. So you see it's explained uh, here in this text, and um, this is the way it is done in, in LIA. So 
basically here I show how you built up um, uh, three die with uh, fair um, with uniform probabilities and here we calculate the probability by doing an or d1 is equal to 1 or d2 is equal to 1 or d3 is equal to 1 it gives the right result here I choose a, a fractional representation you can also have other model actually uh, like this one here what we do is making a join with the three dice and counting uh, the number of one that occur in in these three throws and we we check all the value where uh, this number is greater or equal to one it means we have at least one uh, one ace in the three throws and as I, as you can see it's the same result here it's the problem that I've shown on the first slide, the motivating problem. So you see here it's modeled in a declarative way in LIA. We have the PMF. We have here a switch for the CPT, the conditional probability table for duration of C. Uh, we have a functional PEX here that calculates the, the max uh, of the two, the two paths of the, the scheduling. And we have finally here the conditional probability. So on, on this, you see, um, sorry, the the results use a lazy evaluation. So until the very uh, last uh, expression, all this expression just built up the, the model. And when you ask to print results, Actually, only at that time it calculates, it, um, it starts the status algorithm to calculate the results. And you see here um, the, the results. So we see in this particular problem that um, the disruptive scenario has a null probability. So it doesn't appear in the result. A last uh, case is uh, show you the symbolic computation. Here we, uh, I define two uh, binomial uh, probability. And instead of putting a probability as a number, I put a symbol uh, P uh, or Q here. And then I calculate uh, a conditional probability, which is again quite um, involved because it makes uh, inequalities, conjunction, so you see here we uh, what is important is that uh, here it's ver the very same algorithm that works instead of uh, multiplying and adding numbers it's it uh, multiply or add symbols and here is the result so you see in this nice formula that uh, yeah you, you have a formula with Q and P, which were which was the the symbol I choose for my two binomials. Here it appears nice because I use here a Jupyter notebook, uh, which provide an automatic LaTeX rendering, which is very very nice. So you can have a small probability calculator uh, at your fingertip. Okay, um, these are uh, several uh, reference. I will put this reference um, on the YouTube description. You should you should be able to find them um, below. So there is a paper uh, reference for the proof of correctness, also microlia, if you want really to understand the status algorithm. And uh, for for the rest, I invite you to have a look if you are more interested uh, on um, usage of the algorithm as a PPL, you are invited to check out the LIA uh, site where you can find many uh, examples and tutorials. Uh, you can contact me. I put here also my uh, email. I speak English or French. Okay, thank you for watching and uh, don't hesitate to contact me or leave a comment. Bye.